Good evening, counselors, senior leadership team, and a lot of residents from the town tonight. Excellent. Well, glad to have you out here. We have, um, uh, so I see we have quorum. So we, so I call this meeting for uh, Monday, December 16th, 2019, into session. I ask you all to rise uh, to sing the national anthem. Um, but before we sing, Councilor Trophy has a request to make of uh, everyone here. Just like, to, just like to ask everyone to remain standing after the national anthem for a moment of silence for our fellow counselor in Port Coburn who lost his daughter on the weekend in a tragic accident. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that forward, Council. Okay. Um, approval of agenda. Motion brought forward by Councillor Hildebrand, seconded by Councillor Stewart. Be resolved that the agenda for the December 16th, 2019 regular meeting of Council be adopted. After looking, uh, after viewing the agenda, is there any questions or omissions or additions? Not seeing any. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda? Any against? Motion carries. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. After viewing the agenda, is there any counselor who would like to declare a pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Oh, not seeing any, I ask the clerk to please note that. So noted. Hearing of presentations, delegations, regional report. We have a 5.11 2019 Christmas card presentation. So myself and uh, ask the uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Mike Trophy, Councilor Trophy, to join me. The other pile, I think. This then. Is, uh, now I've got to put my glasses back on. <laughs> yes. Okay. <The> counselor, <coughs> so you will read this out. Uh, and hang on, let me just cross it up like this just to be sure. <coughs> we got three presentations tonight. Christmas are cards and uh, 
Okay, so uh, Deputy Trophy, our uh, Deputy Mayor Trophy is going to read out your name, and uh, please uh, come up, and uh, uh, I guess I'll, uh, he'll give you a certificate. Yeah, this is the first uh, person in certificate of appreciation. Uh, this certificate is awarded to Olivia Thiessen. The, uh, the chocolate bars are actually in piles. Those are for oh, the volleyball oh, team. <laughs> it's because they actually say on the chocolate bar wrapper what it's yeah. for. Thank you. There you go there. Good thing the third inches in line here. Yeah, and then please uh, stay up here because we won't take pictures. Thank you. There, there we go. All right, our next one, the certificate of appreciation, the certificate is awarded to Charlotte Stone. Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate is awarded to Emma Robinson. Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Julia Policella. Certificate is awarded to Ashley McWilliams. Uh, this certificate is awarded to Kathleen Lowry. Certificate is awarded to Lauren Letourneau. And this next certificate is awarded to Evan LeMay. Certificate is awarded to Lola Hughes. Lola's not here. Lola's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, this next certificate is awarded to Myra Bussey. Serena Hounslow. Well, there you have, ladies and gentlemen, a, uh, from a great artist of the town. Mark, can you get 
together? Yep. They're all in. Appreciate the uh, uh, the the honor you've got to Pelham and the, and the hard work you guys did to get it here. So uh, go ahead, uh, Jackie. Yeah, and also if um, 
Maybe in the future it can hold the office right here, right mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah. Between yeah. Crosby that's and the easy. MCC to be perfect. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Good fit. Yep. All right. So we'd like to first uh, call up Emma Brownlee. Emma Hilks. Jessica Conkle. Sand Hill? It's writing and chemistry exam. Yeah. <laughs> very important. Yeah, it is very important. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Coach Gibson and Coach Profack. Thank you. And we also wanted to say a big thank you for recognizing us with an awesome. So just on behalf of our team, we just want to take a minute to lift this. Oh, wow. I know wow. you can find great books put on your desk. <laughs>
always saddens me that these people don't stay for the rest of the meeting. I don't understand. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know if that would have helped. Okay. Excellent. A nice part of the evening. Uh, 5.2 delegations. Uh, we have uh, Del Lenny, uh, 1084 Quaker Road. Uh, you're, you're up, Ms. Le Ms. Lenny. Mayor Junkin, councillors, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm Del Lenny. My husband Rick and I reside at 1084 Quaker Road. Uh, we built there in 1988 and we resided in Town of Pelham since 1967. Now I'm here tonight to request an amendment to a zoning bylaw to put forward a new or to put forward a new bylaw allowing basement apartments and residential homes. This bylaw was passed by the province in 2014. It was done to allow seniors the affordability to stay in their homes for a longer period of time and also to provide affordable housing. The province has been lobbying municipalities to comply for the past five years and some have already moved forward. We have a granny suite which was built in 1999-2000 for my mother with a permit who passed away in 2005. 2007, we decided to rent it. We have a 75-year-old uh, senior living there. She's been with us for 12 years. The basement was finished to some degree as our son resided there for a number of years. In December of 2015, we were in a major car accident. My neck was broken, but I'm not ventilated and I'm not in a wheelchair. But unfortunately, my husband was hurt very badly. <laughs> he was severely hurt and he is disabled. Now after the accident, we instant, instantly lost our breadwinner, our groundskeeper, our landscaper, our maintenance man, and for the first time in 50 plus years, we now have to hire someone. It didn't take long for our resources to decrease. And as the saying goes, when you get lemons, you make lemonade. So we redid the basement apartment in 2018 and rented it affordably. Since the province had already passed this bylaw in 2014, we fully expected the town to have moved forward, allowing basement apartments, so no permit. We now require a building permit to make our home accessible and safe for Rick. Your staff is saying no. No building permit unless you pay up and rezone to a triplex. Now, this is a human rights issue. I did not think anyone would say no to accessibility. This is no more than a cash grab. We would like to remain at 1084 Quaker Road. For how long? Don't know. As we know, you can't predict what tomorrow is going to bring, but we do not want to evict our tenants. They need us and we need them. There's no need for rezoning a triplex. We are four people living in a two-story home on a one-acre property. We have ample prop parking and our neighbors know everything about us. You may say, why don't you move to something more accessible and not so much maintenance? That's easy to say, but how do you tell a man that has <clears throat> everything he's worked for all his life is redundant. When he is struggling to stand on his feet and to walk. The shop has been good therapy. Rick can't always walk there, but he can take a scooter and do whatever. Having said all that, I request that you amend your present bylaw and go forward with what the province has been asking for for the past five years, a new bylaw. There's probably a number of seniors in particular that could use these units. They want to downsize, but they're unable to do so because of affordability. This is 2019. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions to the presenter before I uh, ask the uh, Director of Planning to make uh, a statement? <coughs> okay, no question, thank you. Uh, Ms. Weens. Um, Enlighten Council as to what the difficulties are here 
and how we could move ahead as a council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> through you, um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lenny have come to the town and they wanted to do a renovation to their existing house to make it uh, more accessible. Um, when we looked at the building plans, the building plans that they provided to us indicated that there were two apartment units in this house and the house is zoned R1 for a single detached dwelling, so it doesn't comply with the zoning bylaw. Um, as a result, the chief building official is unable to issue a permit for the renovations that they um, would like to make to the house uh, because it doesn't currently comply with the, uh, the zoning bylaw. So we've had discussions with um, the Lennies and have indicated that what's needed is a zoning bylaw amendment. Um, they don't feel that they should be put in a position to apply, and so they've come here to council. Um, you know, at the time, the Ontario Building Code Act does not allow the chief building official to issue a permit for something that's not in compliance with the uh, with the zoning bylaws. So, staff are certainly understanding of Mr. and Mrs. Lenny's position and their need for the renovations, um, but we're caught in this predicament where the current house um, doesn't meet the uh, zoning bylaw requirements. Excellent. So, um, to follow the process to the next step. Uh, what would be, what would that be? Well, to amend the zoning bylaw, typically we receive an application. We circulate it to other town departments and agencies. There's a public meeting that's required under the Planning Act. And then uh, once we've received kind of the public input as well as agency input and town staff input, we present a report to council with a recommendation and council makes the decision. Um, staff cannot amend the bylaw on our own. It is a council decision. Yes. And if this council so wished, is there uh, a, a, another route to go? Or does council have the, uh, I guess what I'm asking, does the council have the authority to override that process? Um, the Planning Act requires that we um, circulate to certain agencies. The regulations under the Planning Act stipulate what agencies we are required to circulate input on uh, from a zoning bylaw amendment application. The Planning Act also requires that there be a public meeting um, and that there should be a certain amount of notice given for that public meeting. And then it's after that public meeting the, that council can make a decision. So the process is, is laid out by the, by the legislation. Excellent. And, and to follow that process, well, what do you see as a timeline? Uh, the, again, the Planning Act has a time frame for making a decisions on zoning bylaw amendment applications. They're to be made within 90 days of uh, receipt of a complete application. Any questions from any other members of council? Yes, council so through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick question to Lenny's. What exactly are you doing to the home to make it accessible? There's a number of factors that have to be done. Um, Rick cannot have stairs, period. So. For one thing, our deck would have to be raised. We have a step down into the family room. It has to be raised. Our consultants thought we needed a, an elevator. If not an elevator, maybe a stair lift. There's a number of factors. <coughs> a, a, another washroom in the basement. Uh, it was a, what they recommended was a huge thing. It was it was major. We're in a two-story house. We have a basement main floor and a second floor and um, uh, Rick cannot walk he's doing what he can at this point in time they they anticipate that he will probably be in a wheelchair we've been going back and forth to London for the last two weeks uh, Rick has one of his rods 
and his back is broken. Now, they've told us that uh, there is, they can't do surgery because it's too risky. It could complicate things. So, <laughs> we didn't anticipate this. We didn't ask for this. And, uh, And as far as rezoning, I, I really don't believe it's necessary. My goodness, there's four of us living in this four-bedroom, two-story house on one acre. Now, you, we could put 20 houses in our acre probably. And if you had come forward with what the province has been uh, putting out there for the last five years to allow basement apartments for one thing, in our granny suite, it is part of our house. When we built it, it had to con had to be have a, um, an entrance that would, like we could walk in there at any time. It's not a separate unit. I don't know what else you want me to say. Like, okay. we're at a crossroads right now. We don't know what to do. We were gonna move. We lost the house. We were going to because the insurance they reneged they wouldn't do it towards the house they wanted it in renovations so what do you think we should do you know like we want to live in our house we've been there for 31 years our neighbors they know everything about us we live beside them every all around us and john you know me <laughs> Bob knows me, most people here know me, and no, I'm not here asking for the world. I'm only asking for help from my husband. Yeah. And it's not a big quest here. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry, so, so, uh, so I, all I can say before I did the, uh, you do have to uh, appreciate, uh, Ms. Lenny, Ms. Lenny, that uh, there's a process that has to be followed. Uh, we can ex expedite the process, uh, and, 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 and I think everyone here sees that, and, and we will work with you in that. But uh, just, um, I guess that's all I'll say for now. Uh, Councilor Gilbert. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my request is that uh, we go on camera to seek legal advice on this issue from our CO at the end of our meetings tonight. Mm -hmm. Is that right? No. Huh? Uh, before uh, we'll we'll keep that uh, in consideration. Uh, so, uh, Director of Planning, I would like to ask you. Uh, uh, Ms. Lenny has made uh, numerous um, references to that bylaw or to the direction from the province uh, that was passed in 2014. Uh, could you expand on that from uh, from the town's uh, perspective, please? Uh, certainly, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, I believe. What Ms. Lenny is referring to is changes that were made to the Planning Act um, that allows for um, where, an, where you have an official plan that allows for um, policies for second dwelling units and the council passes a bylaw to implement that policy, um, that bylaw cannot be appealed uh, to uh, the local planning appeal tribunal. So that situation has been in place. It's a change that was made to the Planning Act to uh, to somewhat make it easier for uh, people to apply for zoning bylaw amendments for second dwelling units. Um, and so I believe that's what uh, she's referring to. Uh, since that 2014, you'll also recall this June, uh, the provincial government also um, introduced legislation called More Housing, More Choice Act. And um, under that piece of legislation, that uh, legislation requires that when municipalities are updating their zoning bylaw, that they must provide for the ability to have second dwelling units uh, in your zoning uh, for single um, detached dwellings. So the province is certainly being supportive of second dwelling units. They see it as a one tool to address housing affordability. 
And certainly when the town updates its zoning bylaw, we will have to address that matter. Um, and at this time, the town zoning bylaw, as council is aware, was prepared in 1987 and doesn't deal uh, with second dwelling units. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, either to Mrs. Lenny or to uh, the director of planning? If not, then uh, then we will. I, I take it then council will uh, um, take the direction offered by uh, Mr. Hildebrand that after our present meeting today or tonight this evening. We will uh, go in camera and we will discuss uh, the legal aspects of your request. And then uh, we will uh, direct staff to uh, contact you in the morning uh, as to what, what we can do to help you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank but you very much. I suggest you try to move forward. I mean, thank you. Okay, thank you for the presentation. This is the motion to receive. If you ask for an amendment, you have a motion by Councillor Hildebrand to add an item to the agenda for closed session. You need a seconder, and we'll okay. um, so add that to the do agenda. Do I do this first or do the amendment? Do this first, okay. then ask for the amendment. Okay. Uh, so we'll do this uh, piece of paper first. Uh, <laughs> motion put forward by Councillor Wink, uh, seconded by Councillor Hildebrand. <coughs> Be it resolved that Council receive the delegation by Del Lenny regarding 1084 Quaker Road for information. Any more info, any more discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And all the, any opposed? And now we have a, uh, um, so that would be the amendment to the agenda now then. So you, yeah, so yeah. we have a motion by Councillor Hildebrand to amend the agenda to add in, in camera for legal advice at the end of the meeting. I just need a second on that okay. and a, a vote. Seconder on uh, with Councillor Winkle. Second. Uh, any discussion on this amendment? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Excellent. Any opposed? Excellent. So we will uh, now put that item on the agenda after the meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Okay, uh, moving on along. Uh, where are we? No, not this one. Um, uh, I'm all fighting. Here we go. So, yes, the report of regional councillor. Thank you, Ms. Houston. You have the floor. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so, when I put this together, it was before we passed the final budget, so I spent a bit more time talking about. Uh, the agencies, boards, and commissions. Um, but I'm happy to, at my next uh, report, if you want me to do a bit of a deep dive into the final budget, I can do that as well. So um, I highlighted uh, just to um, recap what I'm highlighting. I'm highlighting the budget of the ABCs. I'm speaking to the waste collection update, but I'm also going to give some verbal updates of things that have happened in the last two weeks or that are uh, upcoming. Um, so the first budget that we heard was Court Services, who administers the Provincial Offences Corps on behalf of the region. The region receives 50% of the net revenues. Remainder is distributed to the municipality, so I believe Pelham gets a, a portion of that. Um, so this is the only revenue generating budget that we see, which we love, our favourite budget. Um, and it's a direct result of ticketing and fines, and it's just an interesting point on top of this is um, Sixty-five percent of the ticketing that come contributes to the revenue actually comes from the Niagara Regional Police Services. So, I just wanted to highlight that. But their net revenue projection was seven hundred thirty-four thousand um, dollars. And the police budget, which is a bit bigger, um, they've requested a funding increase and was approved at five point three percent. They have a net expenditure of one hundred and fifty-four. $0.4 million. They had three main asks being um, some items that were deferred for the budget, the leap year salary impact and a loss of provincial grant funding, um, some money for their collective bargaining, some software and, and other purchases, but also uh, they've requested what pr is probably the most significant aspect of the budget is the 40 additional officers. Um, and they've, uh, they're looking to target a response rate of seven minutes in urban areas and 10 minutes in rural areas. 
Um, so I've tried to, uh, and I'll demonstrate how they um, came up with that number and why they're justifying it. Um, there's been a 17.5% decrease in the front number of frontline officers. They've had the responsibility of trying to, um, um, they've had to assign officers to specialize in certain areas, so they've had to draw on their frontline officers in order to service those units. Um, and that's had an impact of decreasing the front line, but also they've, at the same time, they've experienced a, a call increase by 11.8% between 2014 and 2018. And then further to that, uh, Niagara's population has increased. So they've seen a number of pressures that have impacted the number of staff that they have on the front line, but also the number of calls and the workload of those staff. So I've tried to include graphics to help visualize that. And this is um, between 1980 and 2019 demonstrates the frontline officers to um, the percentage of the frontline staff and it's gone from 67 to 45 percent. So there's been a significant decrease in how many officers are on the road patrolling, giving those tickets. Those officers also contribute to the court uh, revenues that we see. Um, so it's a good thing to have more. <laughs> Even just for that reason, it's a good thing to have more officers on the road, but they're also um, they're also uh, staffing the the increase in call volumes with overtime, and they're really struggling to meet those demands because they're finding a num number of those officers are just not answering the phone anymore. So they're ha they're having to pull from those specialized units to try and uh, service calls, uh, which is a problem. And then here just demonstrates um, the increase in calls, and we've seen from 2013 to 2020 a significant increase in the number of calls. They've also had pressures in terms of um, they're, they're getting a lot more mental health-related calls, um, which they feel they're not the right uh, person to be responding. They really feel like someone in a medical prof profession should be responding, but um, they're frontline, so they're they're getting a lot of those calls, and that's creating um, pressures on um, their workload as well. So um, we also know that before I jump into the conservation authority, we also know that Niagara's population is projected to increase to about six hundred and ten thousand by twenty forty one. So they really need to do the work now to train the officers to have them in place um, to be you know, proactively be prepared to deal with the uh, population shift that we're going to experience. Um, and I should mention that the police services actually represents only about 2.1% of the total operating budget at the region. So the Niagara Conservation Authority, um, they've requested a funding and approved a funding uh, increase of 5.9%. Um, that included the 2% increase, which was budget guidance, in addition to 1.65% growth. Um, they've, it's been broken up into uh, the three or two different levies, being the general levy and the special levy. Um, and I just wanted to include this because although um, they levy Niagara, they also levy Hamilton and Haldeman for their budget, <laughs> they actually leveraged that funding with provincial and federal funding, as well as some activities that are self-generating in, term in terms of revenue um, to help come up with an overall bit budget of $12.3 million. Um, so their, their budget represents 0.1% of the Niagara's, uh, Niagara region's total operating budget. And just on a side note, um, the Conservation Authority did recently hire a new CAO. Uh, her name is Chandra Sharma. She starts on January 1st. We're very excited to have someone permanently in that place. Um, we expect to be a bit, have a bit of a learning curve um, as she comes up to speed on the organization. Um, and we're also waiting on um, a revised mandate from the province. We're under the microscope, similar to many other agencies that receive uh, provincial funding. Um, so we're waiting to see, you know, as part of Bill 108, uh, how our, our mandate could change, and that's going to impact potentially what we can levy for. 
Um, so the mandatory programs right now are the natural hazards, conservation and land management, the, and the drinking source water protections. Um, so there may need, be a need to establish an MOU uh, once, <coughs> once the regulations have been uh, determined. And the other, um, the other one I wanted to speak about was the Niagara Regional Housing. They've, they stuck to the budget guidance of 2%. Um, they've got a total of 5.809 million in net uh, expenditure. Um, I'm not going to read everything that they do. Uh, sure everyone has read all the slides, but um, they they represent only 0.2 percent of the region's uh, operating budget. So on Thursday, the 12th, the region passed a final budget at a 5.9 percent uh, increase to the levy. Um, and I'm going to discuss that briefly after I talk about the waste collection. Oh, and this is just a recap of where some of the money goes for Niagara Regional Housing. So if, you, if we look at the budget as a, uh, as a whole, we can see that um, these, the agency boards and commission actually only account for about 2.3% of the overall budget. Um, waste collection, I did come to you guys, I think it was a month ago, and talked about the changes to the waste collection. I just wanted to mention that the contracts were successfully awarded to GFL Environmental and Miller Waste Systems. Um, the new contracts represent a 9.8% increase. Um, the garbage services are getting more expensive. There's also isn't a market for the recyclables like there used to be. Um, so this is part of, again, part of the pressures that we're seeing on the budget. Uh, Pelham, as previously mentioned, uh, we will have weekly organic and recycling pickups, uh, and then the actual garbage will be on in every other week. But there has <coughs> been a, we did add a change that um, uh, diapers will be, there will be an exception made for diapers, and those will be collected on a weekly basis as well. So I think that will be some welcome news for um, some of our residents. Um, and those changes come into the effect in fall 2020. Uh, Pelham's going to fall into the collection area one, which is with West Lincoln, Lincoln, Wayne Fleet, Thorold, uh, and Grimsby. Um, so verbal updates, I'm actually going to put in here about the budget. Again, it was finalized at that 5.92%. We had some significant pressures this year. Um, there was a 1.5% 1, 1 of the total budget is just going to uh, development of the two long-term care, uh, long care homes, one being in Fort Erie and the other one being in St. Catharines. Uh, we've ha we have to hit a provincial um, <coughs> target date to have those built <coughs> or we'll lose provincial funding and it will be a significant costs to the region, so we have a very aggressive uh, construction schedule in terms of moving that forward. We also had $2.2 million cut uh, by the province, mostly to public health and social services, um, so the budget had to absorb all of that money um, this year. Um, I spoke about the waste management contract uh, pressures. We also have uh, significant aging infrastructure um, and repairs that need to be done. And uh, we, did, we did look at where our reserves are. We're about half compared to regions of comparable size. Uh, so it wasn't really an area that we could take it advantage of in terms of trying to offset some of the budget pressures that we experienced. Um, there were two items thrown back into the budget at the last minute. One was the SNP program, uh, which will fund Things like facade improvements, they did add affordable housing and brownfield development in as part of the qualifications for the funding. So I would urge perhaps to look into if there's something we can take advantage of there. It probably will benefit uh, smaller developers who are looking to upgrade buildings or um, uh, maybe some downtown improvements or in commercial areas. Um, so that's going to be available or continued. And then in addition to that, there was a, there's a program called Pro Kids that helps uh, fund recreation programs for children in low-income families. And there was about 250000 put back into the budget uh, for that. So although we were at 5.85%, it got bumped up a bit to 5.92%. Um, so the average 
uh, increase uh, that we were given was $86 for a pr an average property that's ass assessed at 277000 I guess 80 or 75% <coughs> of the houses in Niagara are actually assessed below the average assessment value. Pelham, I think, is different. I think we're at 345 for the average assessment. So if, if my calculations are right, I think it's about $107, the regional portion. So that's, that's the number that we're looking at in terms of an increase this year. Um, in terms of upcoming, we, there is an ending homelessness presentation <coughs> by Ian DeJong. It's on December the 19th in the morning. There is spots available if anyone's interested in attending that. Um, the region... We, can, we just need to book it through the region. I'll be going. I think Mayor Junkin will be attending. So if there's an interest, please let me know. I'm happy to pass it along to include you in the presentation. Um, another update I didn't quite have on here but is newly developed is at the we have an NPCA meeting on Wednesday. We're going to finally have an updated uh, floodplain mapping come before the board for consideration. There was almost some talk at deferring it to a peer review, but we ended up doing some public consultations, and I think we've now landed on something that the board is happy with. Um, so I think this is something, should it pass, we all want it to pass, will be celebrated by a number of our homeowners. Uh, it signifi signifies a number of years of work uh, really trying to, um, to get this policy updated, and it should ease some of the setbacks that are impacting some of our homeowners, and uh, that means that the, their portion of the de developable land uh, could increase. So I think that will be welcome news for a number of the uh, homeowners who live along the Welland River. Um, there was a cannabis workshop on December 11th. Uh, we had a, it was well attended by planners, uh, bylaw staff, um, and, uh, municipal staff, uh, politicians and other stakeholders, as well as some of our cannabis committee members were there. Um, I think it uh, really captured the experience that Niagara's municipalities are having uh, with difficulty in trying to um, resolve some of the compl complaints of our residents. Uh, it really identified um, a shared sense of frustration and a lack of communication and uh, enforcement at the provincial level. We're expecting a report to come back based on all of the feedback that was received in the first quarter and I'm hoping that can then inform some type of advocacy in terms of a uh, Niagara response to the province or the federal government as to you know what we really need and what we'd like to see in our community. So um, that's more to come at a later time. And then finally, I just want to highlight there was the Niagara ADAPTS launch on December the 4th. Um, if you're not aware, it's a partnership that, the, that Pelham has with six other municipalities and the Environmental Sustainability Research Centre at Brock University. Um, they had a, a film showing called Resilience, which talks about the problems of climate change and how, he, how individuals can adapt and, and trying to get people on board in terms of um, you know, viewing it as a problem and, and looking for solutions. Um, this work, the work that this group is doing is very important. It's going to form part of a climate adaption program that I think all of our municipalities will be able to benefit from moving forward and it can impact future infrastructure projects, programs and services. Um, it was attended by myself, the Mayor of Lincoln and Grimsby CAOs as well as some local councillors. Um, I think this is something we really need to show support for, so I'm hoping, I'd like to encourage you to try and attend future events. Um, it, we're really lucky to be able to participate in this. There are municipalities and organizations like the NPCA who want to participate in this, but the program has already advanced, and they're going to have to wait until the next round. So it's the fact that we get to be part of this partnership is, is uh, really important, and... Uh, I think they're going to have some, we're really lucky to participate. i sorry, one other item was the Niagara Biennial Awards. These are awards that the region is, um, has put forward to acknowledge urban design projects, um, things like landscaping or streetscaping. If there's any local projects that may, you know, that we want to acknowledge or, or potentially submit, um, I would encourage you to do so. The deadline is 
January 24th. And I just gave you a whole whack to think about. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Any questions to the councillor? Uh, councillor Hahn. Um, yeah, I have a couple questions actually from a couple of constituents because in Ward 3, of course, Merritt Road. So the Merritt Road extension. Um, last we heard, I guess it was the end of September, a fellow just came in and spoke to us about kind of the what's what as far as transportation um, in the area. But is there any updates at all that you can share? Um, is there any pressure being put on anyone to try to come up with some dates? Because it was very flippant as to moving forward and dates as far as reports. It was like, yeah, we're working on it, but nothing concrete. Is there anything coming our way as um, far as Other than what I've previously emailed you guys, there's nothing new. I mean, I know there was an environmental assessment had to happen first. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have any new information, but I can certainly take that back. Because yeah. and, and, and property values, people change. are worried that live on Merritt Street, what's happening, and <coughs> you know, trying to think through what's what's going to um, come of their homes and the mm -hmm. street and all that kind of thing. So I just want to be well, able to give some timelines. Well, why don't I take that back? And in my next presentation, I'll try and dive deeper on Perfect. that one. Okay, great. Thanks. Any other questions? Oh, I thought you had a couple. No, it's okay. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor uh, Court. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Great presentation. Is there any money coming to the Pelham or Bonhill area from that large budget from the Niagara region? Well, if you want to take advantage of the SNP program, there's probably <laughs> some money there. Um, but other than that, um, um, there's, there is money put into a couple projects in Pelham that have to do with infrastructure. I don't have that in front of me now. I can certainly... Uh, I do have that information, though I can probably email it to you tomorrow. Um, other than that, it's mostly infrastructure updates and. And the, one other question: I have a lot of concern residents about Vance Green going east. There's a lot of Vance Greens going west, mm -hmm. but they're finding it very difficult to turn onto South Palm or North Palm, and also onto Station Street. I just wondered if the region could. You know, you do have events going on to South Palum if they could have at the same time two lights mm -hmm. turning there. Talk to them about that. We've we've talked to them. Even our active transportation committee has talked to them about the lights, uh, just from a <coughs> pedestrian standpoint. But we haven't talked to them about um, traffic flow. But, but I can certainly talk to them about That'd that. That'd be too. greatly appreciated. Thank you. Councilor, <coughs> yeah, through um, Mayor Junkin. When do you think the report will come from the cannabis workshop? When do you expect that to be complete? I'm well. I'm hoping it'll come February. It could be March. Um, I I am finding I'm trying to push things through at the region, and what I'm finding is uh, it seems to it seems to take longer uh, than I'm you know am ideally happy with, and. Uh, Things like the Cannabis Control Committee can actually attain things working a little bit faster than what's happening at the region. Um, but I'm, I'm looking at February, March. I can try and put a bit of a, a pressure to try and receive that earlier. But uh, well, they, th there was a lot of information collected. Like just the gentleman at our table who recorded notes took about six pages and went through three pens. And there was about, I don't know, 10... 12 tables full of people all contributing information so um, and we didn't hire a consultant for that we actually used staff so it may just be a matter of you know um, getting them to come together and actually uh, put the report together and what do you see uh, after the report what would be the next steps that you can see well I think what was really loudly communicated is that there's a lot of frustration in terms of um, getting OMAFRA or Health Canada to respond to some of the complaints that are being heard and, and for some of the issues with um, like the concerns about light or smell and either uh, we need them to act or we need them to delegate us the authority to be able to act on it on our own but that's not going to happen without some kind of uh, negotiation um, so what I think this will shape to be is probably a form of advo advocacy that we could then bring to AMO or potentially to Roma, except it won't be in time for Roma in January. It might have to be the year after, but um, yeah, it, it, we really need some type of collaboration with the province or Health Canada. And when I originally put this motion forward, I asked that those two organizations 
were part of the discussion and attended the session and there was no response. So, you know, if we can't get them at the table to talk about things, how, we can, how can we get them to act on things, right? And, but if we could get a, a, a Niagara delegation and saying, you know, there's 12 municipalities here who are all having the same problems and we need help, or we need you to give us the power to do something about it, um, you know, maybe, that, maybe that's really what has to happen before we get some type of meaningful action. And then, uh, just, sorry, two more. You're talking about the growth in Niagara by 2041. Mm -hmm. What's the anticipated growth for Pelham? I don't have that number. Do you guys have that number? <coughs> Not off the top of my head. No. It is available. I can ask for it broken down by Pelham, and I can send that to you after you guys. Yes, uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I can certainly provide it. I think Pelham, in terms of ballpark figures right now, we're sitting at uh, around 17,500, and I think we're anticipated to grow to around 23,000. We can provide you those numbers. And then my last one here uh, for the new garbage collection. Was there any risk assessment done to these new contractors to ensure that they got uh, up-to-date equipment and they can handle it and we don't run into the same issues that we're having currently? Because um, that's the biggest thing that went through this past year is garbage is not getting picked up. Yeah. Well, I think um, um, looking for a new contractor was uh, the way that the, that the, let's say, public works determined the best way of addressing that problem because we've had, I'd say, systematic issues in terms of the, the garbage pickup, probably over a year, maybe two years. Um, I don't know the level of assessment that was happening. Actually, Mayor Junkin might know better because he's on the Public Works Committee and they would have dove a bit deeper on those contracts. But. Okay, thank you. Just usually in the, in the type of business that I'm in, if we're awarded a contract, they actually, prior to awarding the contract, they make sure uh, that you can handle the, the size of the job and things like that. So just well, wondering. And I'm what sure that there's a process in place um, to do that. It's just I don't have knowledge of okay. what that would be. Okay. Uh, I could just interject uh, and help answer that. The one reason we ended up breaking the one contract into two is because we felt that uh, uh, the, the region is, is too big for one company. You, you need 88 trucks. And, and in order to get more qualified bidders, that's why we broke it into two, uh, so that uh, it, we, we thought we'd uh, get more companies. Instead of needing 88 trucks, you only need 42. And, and yes, we did do, uh, we did delve a little farther into uh, the capabilities. The one thing that uh, and this other company did, for the first five years they had the contract, they were super. We did not have any trouble. What happened was the region extended their contract for another three years, and, and this company did not renew their vehicles. And, and uh, as I pointed out at a, at a uh, public works meeting, it doesn't matter if you're talking combines, tractors, uh, any piece of equipment has got 10,000 hour lifespan. And, and these vehicles, unless they were replaced, their 10,000s was at that five years, when you take in the number of mm -hmm. hours there. So at 5,000, if they didn't have a complete turnover, which they didn't, then all of a sudden, uh, vehicles that should have been on a barge going back to China, they get <coughs> reprocessed of going up and down our roads. And they, and they made a presentation to council, and they said, oh, we're putting new engines in, and we're doing this. Well, uh, anybody here that's main equipment, you can put a new engine in, but then you've got steering, back end, hydraulics. They, the trucks will wore out, and, and that is what uh, is, 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 is causing the headaches now, mm -hmm. is they're trying to keep these. They know that they, not got, they didn't get the contract, so they're not going to go now and spend uh, 200000 on new trucks. So unfortunately, this problem is going to be with us until October, and it's going to get worse, of course, January, February, March. It's, it's not a pleasant uh, uh, prospect to look forward to, but it, it's not going to get better. It's unfortunate. And I will add that when the, when Amterra was awarded the contract, they had significantly underbid other um, contractors, and we're finding we're at the price now that those other contractors bid because that's what it actually costs to provide that service. So um, we've been very careful about 
who we pick as a contractor yeah. and uh, you know, service delivery and continuity is, is one of the factors that was most important in awarding that contract. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, you done? Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure whether my understanding and my reading is correct, but I understand that Tier 1 municipalities, which the region is, on the regional roads, have hydro burying services done as part for free by Hydro Hydro 1. I'm not so aware of that. I'd, I'd like you to look into that. Because from why, well, that's my understanding from reading the article. Okay. So therefore, when we have roads that are Regional roads, Hydro One should have paid for various <coughs> services. So I'd like an answer on that, please. I'm happy to bring that to you next time I present. Thank you. More sooner. Any other no. questions? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple if you could uh, put wow. your NCPA hat on. Okay. Uh, I, I noticed that the um, uh, NC, NPCA uh, signed a memorandum of understanding with Trout Unlimited on the uh, 12 Mile Creek. And I'm, I'm sorry I didn't convey this, uh, talk to you about this. I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you uh, uh, have uh, at your disposal what that memorandum of understanding uh, would look like, or, or how well, do you see that unfolding? Having it in front of me, um, we did reinstate the restoration program this year, and that has to do with you know restoring areas that are you know where erosion has taken place, or trying to protect um, um, areas like the Twelve Mile Creek, uh, where, which has a fish habitat that needs to be protected. I know that um, Twelve Mile Creek has. Um, done a lot of like tree planting activities on properties in Pelham um, to try and protect the creek from erosion. Yes. So I would suspect it has to do with our restoration Excellent. program. Excellent. And, and just one last one. Uh, could you uh, tell me what uh, has the, uh, so the question is, what is Niagara River Ramsar uh, designation steering committee? What, what is Ramsar? Uh, so, Ramsar is a town in Iran, and it's the site of where this environmental um, conference was held. And it it um, it identifies areas that um, deserves international attention because it meets a series of criteria. And there's nine different criteria. Uh, it may have you know a significant water feature. There may be a significant bird population. There may be a significant um, fish population, um, and the Niagara River has, is one of, I think, three that has been um, identified that has all of the criteria of being an important environmental uh, feature. So we had a presentation uh, come forward by um, the group that looks after trying to push this forward because it does need, um, it does need endorsement by the municipalities and the cities that um, the feature is in. They've already got all of the American um, cities and towns to endorse and um, agree to it. Um, the only one left in Niagara now is Niagara on the Lake and they had some concerns about how it could potentially impact irrigation which um, I don't think it, it does to any degree but they just wanted some reassurances. And then it has to go to Niagara Parks, and Niagara Parks has to be the authority to actually submit the application. So um, there is a presentation at one of our NPCA meetings from this group. There's also a letter from the province that just uh, confirms that you know this designation does not impact in any way what you're able to develop in in the area outside of existing. Um, development restrictions that are environmentally based, um, okay. but they came before the NPCA looking for our endorsement, and we uh, unanimously voted to endorse them. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Council. Hey, Mr. Mayor. I just brought one other thing. I was at a public meeting with Trout Unlimited, and lo lo all, there was over 100 of the landowners there. Mm -hmm. One of the things they noted was Hydro One put their cats and all their equipment right through the 12 Mile Creek destroyed the vegetation, killed the fish, <coughs> and no one was able to stop them. And they, they were amazed that the Conservation Authority wasn't able to have the power to do something with Hydro One. And I don't understand because all the landowners were saying the Conservation Authority rules over us. 
Yeah. And you don't cancel the rule over hydro one. Like I, I don't understand how that how that works when our residents. So I, I don't know, you know, no, I understand. the situation, but I, I have had um, some residents complain that there's been some tree, tree clearing done and the NPCA has gone out and asked them to stop working and there's been fines levied. Now may, maybe the fines aren't weighty enough <laughs> to you know, make a difference in terms of whether people take these rules seriously or not, but um, I would be surprised that they wouldn't act. I don't know how recent that was because uh, it sounded there's very recent because like in the last year. Yes, yeah. because Trial Unlimited was actually going out to repopulate the vegetation, okay. do all the work that they needed uh, to do as a service to all the landowners. They I was out. I was out planting back. trees with them. Okay. <laughs> I wish they had said something to me because I could have followed up on that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. That's I it? Know. Okay, yep. thank you everyone. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Houston. Okay. Um, have a motion passed, put forward by Councillor Hahn, seconded by Councillor Corr. We have resolved that the December 16th, 2019 report submitted by Regional Councillor Houston be received for information. Any further discussion? Not seeing any. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> uh, motion put forward by Councillor Corr, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that the following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Excuse me. SC-39-2019, Special Council, December 2nd, 2019. Number 2, C-20-2019, Council, December 2nd, 2019. And SC-40-2019, Special Council, December 5th, 2019. Any Comments, omissions, discussion on these minutes. Not seeing any. I, uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. <coughs> so we are at uh, any request to list items from consent? No. Okay. So we're down to the uh, consent items. I find them. So consent agenda items be considered in block. You're here at number oh, eight. Okay, sorry. Yeah, request. request uh, number eight. Request to lift consent agenda items for separate consideration. Is there any councillors who want to lift? And just hang on a second. No, that's it's only items in number nine. Okay, thank you. Okay, Bob. Okay, so we have uh, any, uh, is there any? No, okay, I don't see it. So, um, a motion put forward by Councillor Chofi, seconded by Councillor Corr. Be it resolved <laughs> that the consent agenda items listed on the December 16th, 2019 Council agenda be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. Uh, all those in favor? All those against? Okay, so um, that recommendation moves forward. And because there was none lifted, we will now have this one. Go to the next. Agenda item, motion brought forward by Councillor Trophy, seconded by Councillor Core. Be it resolved that Council receive report number 2019-0156 and that the Early On Child and Family Center program be welcomed to the Old Pelham Town Hall commencing January 6, 2020 and that the Director of Public Works be directed to initiate an RFP 
for the engineering of a septic holding tank to replace the existing, existing septic system at the old Pelham Town Hall. Discussion on either or both of these. Councillor Core. Yes, to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a problem with, we don't know how many kids will be attending that program on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when I'm looking at the map, do we have efficient playground areas for these kids when they attend? Um, so we'll uh, turn to the Director of Recreation. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, it is an indoor um, program. They would only be using inside the hall from 9 until 11.30 every morning. And the children are accompanied by their parents or their caregivers. It's not a daycare. It is a social play time <coughs> that's offered okay. by the region. Uh, and my last, well, well, I'll let other yep. councilors right. speak first. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Councilor Fieldgren. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I request that this motion be divided in two separate paragraphs for comment and vote. And uh, your suggestions? Which, how would you like to see it divided? The first paragraph and the second paragraph. I see. Okay. First one being a talk on the early childhood part of it, and the second part being the directive to initiate an RFP. Okay. Uh, let me ask the clerk, is that possible? Oh, yes. It's just a request to divide. So, okay. um, so we don't need another motion. So or? when you call the question, yep. you'll just call two separate questions. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, Councilors, uh, the, uh, we will be discussing this uh, uh, as two different items, and definitely when we vote on them, there would again be two separate uh, uh, considerations. Uh, knowing that, uh, any other uh, comments on either the first or second paragraphs? We have Councilor Wink down here. Uh, Councilor Wink. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So um, I'm really encouraged that. United Church, um, the region or the province is looking for different providers and, and it's great that it is staying in our community and in fact being more central. My question would be, um, I've gone to the early on site, the existing one right now, and they have a ton of play equipment that's left out all the time. Um, what's going to be done with that equipment that's going to be in the hall if other users want to use it in the afternoon or the evening. Okay. We'll turn to the director. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when we met with the uh, early on years, um, <clears throat> we, we spoke about storage and that they would have to clean up prior to noon because we do have the seniors that be in at noon. And they said that there would not be an issue they will be using the coat room, which is very rarely used right at the moment. Um, what happens when there's a uh, large event and people come in with coats? Um, there's portable coat racks at the front door because normally it's come in through the front door. In speaking with the Kinsmen, which they host most of the large events, they actually suggested that the uh, coat room, if we put a door on it, it's locked they could be using it. They also do not um, <coughs> operate during the summer months, and that's when we have most of our weddings and so forth as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, Councilor Moore. Mayor, um, another question with regards to the timing. So the report says that it's for 10 months, and it says the amount, but it doesn't say for how long. So is it for five years, 10 years? Like, what is the actual contract? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're, we're running on a yearly basis right at the moment, so uh, they are going to be, you know, probably by October they will revisit to see if this is still working for them, and uh, then we'll come back to council and let you know. So our vote tonight is really just for the 10 months. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? And then is there... Any other questions on the second paragraph uh, pertaining to the uh, RFP for uh, and for the engineering of a septic holding tank to replace the existing septic system? 
at the old town hall. If you want, you can vote on the first oh. part first okay. Oh, okay. and then get into discussion on that part. Okay, excellent. The uh, clerk suggests that we can uh, vote on the first part of the uh, resolution. So uh, be it resolved that council receive report number 2019-0156 and that the early on child and family center program mm -hmm. be welcomed to the old Pelham Town Hall commencing January 6, 2020. Any further discussion? Not seeing any. Uh, all those in favor? And any opposed? So that uh, carries. And now uh, we will discuss the uh, discuss, debate uh, the septic system. And I believe Councilor Hildebrand has something to say. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. I request that this motion be de amended to refer this motion back to staff for a report by the end of March 2020. Okay. And can I ask, uh, uh, Councilor, uh, your concern, perhaps? Well, there's several concerns. First of all, it, it's not in the 2020 budget. Okay. So that's $80,000 <coughs> of out of our 2020 budget. It isn't there. Okay. It's in budget in 2021. Yeah. Okay. Then, then there's a lot of engineering details. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Any um, any other debate questions on the uh, second resolution? Not seen. Oh, so we. Oh, so how do you? So wait. So I got to see. So we. So this he's is an amendment. Proposing an amendment. I yeah. need a seconder on it. Oh, so we need a. Oh, so my Councillor Core, and I will second the amendment. Any debate on the amendment? Not seeing any. Then uh, all those in favor of uh, Councillor Hildebrand's amendment? Uh, um, no. uh, yay, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yes. And any opposed? Okay. So that uh, amendment carries. Uh, so then. Yeah, so we'll just mark that deferred. I'm sorry. Mark this as uh, referred back to staff. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, see. Can, I can mark it. Just okay. initial it and I'll mark yep. it. Yep. Okay. So then, so the, 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 the amend, so the resolution now reads um, that the. Uh, and no. it, it's just being referred back to staff. Um, I'm not sure what details council's looking for in the report. It might be helpful to staff to know what council wants to see in that report. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gilderman? Mr. Marr and I have had a detailed discussion. Oh, so he but will. Council's oh, not but aware. should be so. still somewhat. Can you explain it to us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, going over the details of the tank, I think the size of the tank, the details of the tank, what our proposals, what our actual proposal is going to be, how the $80,000 is going to be spent. It, it, it's not detailed. We, we've got a request to spend $80,000. We don't know how much is the tank, how much is the pipe, and all this kind of stuff. But a more detailed... Uh... More detailed report. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so then, uh, so this will now be referred back to the Director of Public Works um, for a more detailed engineering study uh, on the septic holding tank uh, to replace the existing yeah, septic right. system at the old Pelham Town Hall. All those in favor? All those against? And motion carries. All right. Uh, where are we? So uh, we are now. I'm finished. added to the agenda, so you're on okay. bylaws. So we're just now, we're just doing what? 14? Bylaws. bylaws. Okay. So we don't have any uh, unfinished business, and we, unless someone has any new business to bring forth, then what we have left is the presentation and consideration of bylaws. Excuse me. Bylaw number 4179, 2019, being a bylaw to amend Bylaw number 3334, 2013, being a bylaw to adopt an emergency management program, emergency management plan, and to empower mutual assistance agreements governing provision of necessary services during an emergency. 
And number two, bylaw number 4180-2019, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into an agreement with the Harrison Group Limited for consulting services as per the proposal to coordinate accessibility for Ontarians with Disability Act compliance for the period February 1st, 2020 <coughs> to me. January 31st, 2022, and to repeal and replace bylaw number 3574, 2015. Uh, any discussion on these bylaws? No, I not seen any. I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Oh, we got this. I'm sorry. Motion. No, you, you've already read it in. No. Oh, okay. So yeah. just, uh, um, Chloe, I do have to say. So this motion <laughs> was brought to you by uh, uh, uh -huh. Councillor Trophy and Councillor Core. And uh, so the bylaws I just read. So all those in favor and all those opposed. Okay. There we go. Thank you. You would think that after a year. Anyway. Thank you. Uh, count, uh, motion put forward by Councillor Kaur, seconded by Councillor Hahn. Be it resolved that Council recess the in camera portion of the meeting and reconvene immediately following the committee meeting scheduled for this evening. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, oh, 